Hello, my name is Justin Bright. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.10.1 in my next small step RP-1 career mode playthrough. And here we are, third attempt with the Visalt satellite trying to get that science down uh, on another lovely Titan III launch. Uh, so let's just enjoy that and uh, get this thing up into orbit, shall we? Um, so the only things that have really changed on this is that I have added three antenna to the top of this craft, uh, which is going to allow us to point at the individual um, TDRA satellites that are in orbit, and then I'm just going to have to fiddle with all of them to make sure they're all pointed back. Um, I, I can do at least some of that from a, uh, what do you call it, from a UI uh in flight here so i don't necessarily need to flip to all of them but i'm not sure i've extended all of the antenna so i may need to go deal with that so that's all boring stuff that i will handle off screen once we get this thing into orbit but um yeah fairly simple here um you can see the point where those two pieces of debris have switched over into um uh distant object enhancement uh, items because now they're just little black dots that are in the distance here um, I've also updated at a commenter's um, suggestion the uh, distant object enhancement for um, real solar system, but I'm not sure that I've, I must not have actually done it right because it doesn't look like it's any different than it was, but we'll see once we're a little bit further into orbit. Yeah, it looks like they're, the other planets are still the same color, so I must not have installed that thing, uh, the, the new config correctly because everything is still just little white dots, but... Anyways, um, we are now in orbit at our uh, base orbit of 150 kilometers, but that is plenty to actually get started by extending all three antenna and then uh, connecting each one to its destination satellite. So we're looking for the Tedris 1, 2, and 1, 1. We're looking for the Tedris 1 2, and then finally the Tedris 1 3. And there we go. So those are all connected. So in theory, we should have good connection through them at this point, but I'm not seeing that we do. Let's take a look at where we're at. Uh, yep, 1-2 and 1-3, I don't, or and 1-4 or 1-1. Uh, two of them have not been configured to actually point down, so I'm going to have to go up and do all of that fiddling, but you can see now that no matter where we are in the orbit, we will have fantastic connection back home. All right, so here we are making our final burn up to a circular 850 kilometers-ish. Um, if there is a button that lets you control real antennas from other vessels, I don't actually know what it is. So let me know down in the comments below what I'm missing there. But um, anyways, I'll just bounce around a little bit and we will get that to, uh, to look about as good as we can get it. So uh, I just need to make sure that we are about as circular as we can be. And there we go. So, uh, we'll get this all set up, um, at least get some power going, and then I'm going to flip around and get all of the uh, other satellites, the relay antennas, handled, and then we'll be back here to finish this mission up. All right, we are back to the Visalt 3. I have finished doing all of the um, antenna pointing and tweaking, and now let's see what we have, uh, how we've done. Uh, so it looks like we are indeed pointing up to the TDRS 1-2 satellite. You can see all of the nonsense. Uh, you can see that we are bouncing our signal up and then back down to the uh, Goldstone uh, DSN station. It looks like there is a bottleneck somewhere because we are only transmitting at 37 kilobytes per second. Yeah, not sure why that's uh, as low as it is. Uh, these have been, uh, the transmit power on these have been uh, tuned up to 35 uh, DBM, and so I'm not 100% sure why it is uh, not higher. I thought we were going to be getting something closer to a megabyte per second, but um, uh, this is the last time I'm going to futz with it. <laughs> I've done so much to get this silly thing to work that... Um, that, that's pretty much that's pretty much it as far as I'm concerned. So this is either going to work or it's not. And if it's not, then that's just too bad. Um, and if it is, then wonderful. We'll get we'll get some science back. Um, I guess the thing is is that we will be getting some science back one way or the other. Um, it's just uh, if we get it in any kind of timely fashion by the time I'm done with the the series. All right. So with that done, let's go ahead and turn on all the science uh, to get all the all that stuff running. 
Magnetic scan, mass spectrometry, orbital perturbation, photography, that's the big one, RPWS, and visual imaging. So that's all extended and happening. I also want to make sure that we get the scan sats going. So there's one on the radar, and there's one on the ultra resolution digital imaging camera. And so that is everything as far as our electric charge is concerned. Uh, we are still going to bottom out of our power pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not sure if that's avionics related. No, it's just uh, too much too much stuff. We can only do one of these um, scan sets at a time, it looks like. Although we will be removing this, so that's going to take away some. Yeah, if we turn off the visual imaging, we have a ton of extra power, 1.3 per second. Uh, while we're doing all of our science and all of our communications and everything else. Fabulous. So there we go. We are sending back at 30 kilobytes per second, which is just not what I was hoping for. Um, although it looks like we are transmitting uh, as fast as we're getting it in at this point. So I guess that doesn't actually matter. Uh, if we're Getting this photography for data at 29.68 kilobytes per second, and we're able to transmit at um, more than that, then that's fine. Maybe that's just the maximum amount of data that we that we can currently have at a time. Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like this data is accumulating, so I'm going to call this a win. Uh, so it looks like we are indeed transmitting up as fast as we possibly can. So there we go. That is uh, the VizAlt. Uh, system and just to um, make it clear what I've finally done is each one of these is uh, each one of the Tedris satellites is pointed at its two neighbors and also at its dedicated ground station uh, and also it has a fourth antenna that is pointing directly at the VizAlt 3 so we will always always have the signal um, this will always have signal from one of those satellites at any given point. I don't think there's going to be any dead zones based on where we are. So there you go. That's what that's what we're looking at. Uh, even though that some of the cones are fairly small, and this would definitely not have covered the entire uh, globe of the Earth, you can see that if it's pointed directly at our target, it's always going to be as fast as possible. So there you go. We have science coming, and it is coming uh, fast. We'll be getting 10,000 science over the course of 20 years, and I'm finally going to put this uh, mission architecture to bed. Uh, hopefully this has been interesting for you learning how to better deal with real antennas. Uh, one of the ways that you can deal with this instead is um, you don't they don't need to be at geostationary. Like, you could just have them at... Um, you know, whatever, uh, whatever altitude, so long as they're pointing at each other and they can all always see one of the, um, or not even pointed at each other, so long as they're all pointed at all of the, um, the main ground stations, you could probably just do that instead and have it orbit at whatever altitude is convenient for your mission. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Now we're just going to separate this... and deorbit this bit of debris and just leave that camera in orbit forever and never switch to it again. And there we go, we see it receding into the distance. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so finally a successful mission. All right, we are counting down to the launch of the Mars Exploration System 2 in just four seconds. Three, two, one, ignition. Main wiggle start. And we have liftoff. Mars Exploration System, which is heading up with a uh, the whole lander, return capsule, um, rover shenanigans uh, on its way out to Mars, uh, which we went over uh, kind of a while ago, um, but it's finally time for that to head out on its way. So this is using a variant of the um, 
my Paladin launch system that I don't think I've ever actually used prior to this and probably won't be using again. Uh, the 2F1 uh, launcher is pretty neat, but I, I haven't found too much use for it, uh, and I think this is an older, an older design even. Uh, but uh, it is a, a good way to be like a little bit of a step up from a uh, Titan 3 payload um, because there's just so much you can do with that uh, compared to um, this chonker. Um, and it's uh, less than a Saturn 5 or even um, uh, even my uh, Paladin 4 variant with four F1 engines. So a uh, little bit of a step in between there uses two J2Ss on the uh, second stage, and then it has a 4RL10 upper stage. So let's see when we get to that. All right, so we've got the 4RL10 upper stage firing just as we uh, get just about into our final orbit. Let's accelerate on through this, and you can see that this thing looks very similar to other lander designs that I have put together. Um, I have tested the individual pieces, but once again, uh, that's always kind of the, the, the thing. Um, as you've seen, my designs don't always work the way that they seem to, or I thought that they would, when they finally get to their final destination. Now, this thing's a little bit of a lag monster because it's built out of a bunch of different pieces. Um, but yeah, we have a very similar sort of thing where we have kind of a rover, a rover deal up on, or no, I'm sorry, we have the, um, lander vessel up on top here. Um, we have the rover in one of the middle, uh, the middle bits here, just a little, a little guy. Anyways, you can't really see anything there. Sorry about that. Um, and then we have, uh, this, which is going to be a, uh, return capsule for, uh, another set of science. And it's a built a little bit more simply because it does not have the, um, what do you call it? It does not have the uh, antenna mast for the um, communication satellites because it doesn't need them. It's just bringing its own stuff or its own communications and it doesn't need to worry about the rest of it. Because, uh, yeah, we're just using just regular S-band satellite here or dish here because um, I built this before I had X-band and I didn't think to upgrade it. All right, so we are ready to uh, make our plan to get out to uh, Mars to finally finish out a whole bunch of contracts that we have outstanding. All right, so you can see that this is going to be a very tight uh, set of maneuvers here. It's going to use every single drop of fuel in our transfer stage, which is just lovely. So we're going to do that as soon as we possibly can. And away we go. We are flipping around, losing a whole bunch of our uh, fuel as we orbit, and uh, the liquid hydrogen boils off. So we've lost about 100 meters per second, 120 meters per second of our delta V. All right, we are on our way, burning out towards uh, towards Mars. This is one of my last um, big automated missions before we really start focusing down on our final objectives uh, that will cap off this series of having some crewed missions head to Mars, um, Venus, other places, and then we have our lander on Mars is kind of what I'm thinking is our big capstone there and maybe some architecture around that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I'd like to get this to a point where we can kind of um, button it up and call it call it good you know what I mean like actually finished properly rather than me just kind of running out of uh, running out of time and needing to go do other things you know what I mean uh, but we are just about there just another 80 seconds of burn and then we are going to have to uh, use some of the fuel from our um, uh, our orbital insertion stage uh, our Martian orbital insertion stage uh, because this thing just does not quite have enough to make it happen we are just a couple seconds away from that split. And three, two, one. And... Stage, and there we go. We are burning. And hopefully that will uh, give us a good trajectory. So I will obviously check on this in just a moment because that was a very long burn so there's almost no way that it is uh, <laughs> where it's supposed to be all right so we're just going to kill that kill rotation and let's see how we did not great but frankly not terrible 
I'm just using my RCS to see if I can't push this in to an encounter. All right, now we have our encounter. Boy, oh boy, this, th this little thing is such a little lag machine. All right, so in about a minute and a half, let's see what kind of maneuver we can get to. All right, nice close orbit here. Uh, just another 86 meters per second of delta V to correct that trajectory, and hopefully that should all be okay. Actually, let's see. Thinking this through a little bit, let's uh, let's try to plan on having a, a, an orbit that is a little bit more polar so that I have a much easier time uh, finding a, um, a landing time. There we go. That way, uh, no matter where this thing is, I will have a relatively easy... I, there will be a time eventually during my orbits that I will cross over its path, and so therefore I will be able to drop down onto it. All right, and while we, uh, I'm far past the node, it doesn't actually matter, so I'm just going to fire up... Fire up the engines and start making this burn manually. 60 meters per second left. 5, 40, 30, 20... All right, here we go, just about now. All right, there we go. That looks good. Uh, we're just going to be in a weird little near-polar orbit um, that is going to give us plenty of chances to hit rover site alpha. So that is how we're going to plan for that. And otherwise, this is um, a pretty basic sort of uh, craft. We are spinning a bit, but uh, that's that's kind of how these things go. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's going to be our last shot at those missions, and hopefully these work out. But we'll call that a successful mission so far. All right, but I think that is going to just about do it for us today. Uh, we have here on the pad Apollo Moon Base 1, which is going to be my uh, small uh, lunar surface outpost that we are going to be putting down uh, into, uh, not Shackleton Crater, but just somewhere. <laughs> Um, for those of you who've been watching For All Mankind, I actually just started it myself. But anyways, uh, it's not going to look anything like that. It's going to be uh, a little bit more simple. Um, it's going to be a little bit more simple based on the needs that we have for the base and the objectives that we need to complete. So that is all that we are going to have here, and we will get to launching this next time. I just wanted to show off this massive, uh, massive thing standing on the pad, needing an absolute monster of a Saturn V uh, tooled specifically to send this to the surface of the moon, but we will get to that next time. If you enjoyed this episode, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.